Welcome to the Museum of Aquarium and Pet History. Okay, so today it is the end of May 2024. We're getting ready for our two-year anniversary, which is next month in June. Um, I've just gotten off a really turbulent month where I had house guests for two weeks, and then I traveled for two weeks, so I've been recuperating. So uh, when I was traveling, I had a chance to do a little bit of antiquing, hit a couple antique festivals and whatnot. So I'm going to, on this video, just show you some of the things that I acquired during my extravaganza back east. All right, we'll start with this little one right here. This is a footed fish bowl. It is a goldfish bowl, but it also could have been used for candy as well. But it is fluted, which means it's open at the bottom, this bottom little part here. Um, it's got the pontel, which means it's hand blown. There's no seam, so it's all hand blown. Definitely 1800s, probably 1850 to 1890s. Uh, this is the smallest one I've seen in a fluted fishbowl, especially fluted. Most of the fluted ones are from the United States. The ones that are solid are actually European. Um, the European ones also are a little bit thicker glass and usually smaller at the top because they have colder climate. So they decided to make them smaller, but um, was a really a great find. Um, absolutely great find, especially one this small. The other thing that I found, which was probably used as a candy dish, I don't know if it came with the top originally or not, or if somebody added that, but this is a Rexall bowl, and this is one of the larger ones. They came in four different sizes. They came in a squat, and then they came in the, the normal size in three different sizes, a small one, medium, and a larger one. This is the medium size, and it's very rare to find this size, actually. Normally, you find the small one, not this one. But that was a great find because uh, you don't find these very often. Rexall sold lots of goldfish at their drugstore um, during the day, the heyday. Think of CVS as selling goldfish, unheard of. Rexall did sell goldfish, and that was like in the 30s. So this is probably 1930s. The other one is much older. The other thing we found, a dog bowl. Now this one, which needs to be cleaned up, is from Mason Cash. Mason Cash is a pottery place in England, still in business. Uh, they used to do all their own pottery work, then they send it over to Portugal. And after Portugal, they sent it to China, unfortunately. So they do it all in China now, but originally they made them in England. And this was made in England. This is a spaniel dog bowl. So in other words, if you have a cocker spaniel or one of the spaniel dogs that has the big frilly ears, and they, they're very long ears, they hang down like very long. Uh, a lot of times they would get their ears stuck in their water bowl or their food bowl. So they made this uh, one with this different angle so the dog can stick his snout in here and the ears go on the outside so the ears don't get dirty. And you probably wonder, well, who came up with this? And it was Spratz. Spratz came up with the very first spaniel bowl. And I would bet money, I haven't done the research yet, that it was Queen Victoria that asked for it for her, for the dogs that she had, because probably complaining that, hey, my dog's ears always get in the food. Is there a way to prevent that? So they made this angular bowl. So that's pretty cool. And Mason Cash, and this is one that was made in England. Uh, we found two little grottos in our travels. Um, and just to tell you, this was $3 and this was $5, just to, not trying to make you jealous, but it's pretty cool when you go into a store and you find grottos, um, especially when you're, you hunt 10 stores and you find nothing, and on the 10th store you find this. So that's actually really cool that you could find these Victorian 1890s grottos, possibly made by uh, Jacob Cassell, um, who makes the, all the other faux boss type items. And if you've never seen the uh, article on Phobos by my friend Emiliano Spot out of Italy, you should check that out. It's a great article. Uh, the other thing we found, uh, and this actually we didn't find, this was sent to us, but I wanted to show it to you anyways. This is a G. Gunther out of New York, uh, 10 top bird feeder. So this is definitely Victorian. Gunther was um, uh, a birdcage manufacturer, but a very unknown one. He wasn't like Hendrix or one of the big names, Lindman or uh, uh, Osborne. You know, he's a, a, a unknown manufacturer that only lasted about 20 years. 
Um, so it's rare to find anything from Gunther. So I was excited to find this and I sent it over to my artist to see if she could bring the type up so we can see who made it. And she did. She spent time and actually uh, will show this to you. She actually brought the name out, G. Gunther out of New York. So that's a tin top feeder from the Victorian era. And then one other thing, uh, this we got recently. This is an awesome oyster dog clipper. We had an article on grooming and I always try to find historical articles on dog grooming because there isn't any. So um, I was excited that uh, we found something to add to our, our grooming collection. Basically some of these 1960 dog clippers uh, because it's hard to find any old grooming stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool actually. So anyways, that's it. That's our five minutes for today. And I thank you for coming. Um, we do have a lot of stuff coming up. So, uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Thanks.